Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a video talking to you about the rifle you see here in front of you. This is the Midwest Industries MI-10F, um, basically Midwest Industries version of their AR-10s. Uh, this one specifically is the 18-inch model featuring, featuring the Criterion barrel. Um, I've now got probably about 850 rounds through this. By the time I'm done shooting today, we'll be closer to 900. Uh, and so I figured I would take you guys along in the journey to see how this thing does and let you know whether or not this is something worth considering if you are looking for an AR-10. Now, in the interest of the full disclosure, right out of the gate, I do wanna say that Midwest Industries did provide this rifle at no cost for me to do the review. However, all of the ammunition uh, supplied for the video was paid for either by myself or the support that I get over on Patreon. So uh, you will still see all of the rounds that I put through this thing. You will see the good and the bad, um, but still something I want to mention right out of the gate before we get too far into this. Now, uh, let's go ahead and talk about how the rifle uh, is gonna come out of the box. Obviously, there's been a lot of stuff done to this uh, that is non-standard, um, but starting at the, uh, at the back, we have the Magpul ASC stock. Um, now, this is the one that comes standard on these rifles. You've got your adjustment tab, and then you've also got your friction lock. There's also a storage compartment here on the side. This is not the version of the ASC that has the storage um, on the sides for uh, like uh, uh, along the cheek weld for like batteries and whatnot, um, but that's perfectly fine with me. Now, uh, back here on the end plate, we do have the Midwest Industries QD end plate back here. So if you like to mount your sling to your end plate, that's gonna come out of the box with that, which is nice, especially because that can be a pain to change when the castle nut is properly staked, which Midwest Industries does do. Not only is it staked once, it's actually staked in both locations where they could stake it to make sure that that castle nut is going nowhere. Now, moving forward, we have the Radian um, Raptor charging handle. This is the standard aluminum tab version versus the LT. Um, Radian charging handles are very popular and for very good reason. Really, really easy to use, uh, ambidextrous, and also made here in Oregon, which means they've got a soft spot in my heart. And then also my boys, Alex, Caleb, uh, love you guys, miss you guys. My uh, former coworkers that now work for Radian, uh, always got a soft spot in my heart for them. Now, uh, also from Radian, we have the uh, Talon Safety. Now, uh, this one came out of the box, set up for the 45 degree throw versus the 90 degree throw. There's some other rifle manufacturers uh, that include Radian Talon safeties, but they always set it in the 90 degree throw. Um, so then I always have to change it, but this came already in the 45 degree. So good stuff there. Magpul MOE grip. This thing will be getting an oil bottle um, floor plate in there, but that's kind of more of a gee whiz thing. The trigger is just a nice mil spec trigger, uh, perfectly serviceable as you'll see throughout this video. You can definitely still run this gun very, very quickly, even with that, again, as you'll see in the video. Uh, safety, just stand, or sorry, um, magazine release, standard magazine release. Right now it's got a 20 round magazine in it. Uh, it does come with a 10 round magazine, uh, but I've been running the uh, SR25 pattern Magpul mags, mostly the 20s and the 25s. Been working perfectly fine. I've also used the M118 version of the 25 round mags. Again, totally fine, uh, no issues. Uh, and I've been almost exclusively shooting M80 ball type ammo. So I have shot some mil uh, like match ammo, but that was with the shorter magazines. Um, but both the M118 and the standard SR25 mags work just fine for Magpul in my experience so far. The bolt carrier group is not one of theirs. Um, it is, as far as I can tell, a black nitride bolt carrier group. I'll correct it on the screen if I'm incorrect there, but I'm fairly confident in that. Um, single ejector. Uh, I have had a couple malfunctions, but I don't think that it's the fault of the ejector. Um, but uh, for what that's worth, uh, marked Midwest Industries, easy for disassembly and cleaning, uh, which I have I did disassemble and clean this after about 250 rounds, just uh, just to make sure after the first rain session that everything was looking good internally. And then today we did another uh, again 600 rounds up to this point with no issues at all. Handguard is one of the combat style handguards from Midwest Industries. I believe this is the 15 inch version. You have a QD point at the three and nine o'clock position at the back three, six, and nine at the front. Uh, and then you've got M lock along the three, six and nine o'clock position. Uh, I've got a little rail that I put up here uh, for QDing a bipod on and off. 
And then the uh, muzzle device, as it comes out of the box, is one of the Midwest Industries two chamber brakes. I went ahead and swapped that out for the uh, YHM flash hider so I could mount my silencer to it. Also because while the Midwest Industries muzzle brake is extremely effective, um, it is horribly unpleasant to be around. Uh, I'm telling you, you can keep your sights on target very, very easily with it. Um, but that thing had to go after that first range day with my buddy Christian and I, um, that was one of the first things I did once getting back into town. Now, as far as the stuff I've done to it, obviously first thing you probably noticed is the paint job, just a quick spray paint job that I did. Uh, and then I've got a primary arms. This is their PLX one to eight compact, um, excellent scope. I'll do more talking uh, about the scope in the dedicated video for that, because uh, I have a lot to say there that I don't want to bog down this video with. Um, we've got a Sly Tactical Sling. This is one of their padded slings. It's been working very well, as all of their slings have worked well for me. Then we've got the Z-Bolt Blazer. Um, this light, you know, considering this rifle, can easily allow me to reach out to six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred yards. Uh, I figured I should have a light that will also let me identify things at that distance. And if you haven't already seen the video on this, you should, because this light is the one that will actually let you do that. So with that kind of quick overview out of the way, let's go ahead and roll in some shooting footage and then we'll talk about some of the experience that we've had so far. I don't know how like saw gunners and M240 gunners like do this. I'm like 300 rounds in, you're gonna do a lot of run and gun, but damn. Now the vast majority of the ammo that we've shot through this has been standard M80 ball, uh, mostly the Hurtenberger um, uh, surplus M80, and then some ADI, um, uh, the Australian Defense M80 ball, uh, and then as well as some hand loaded stuff that's built, uh, loaded to M80 specs. And the only ammo that I've had any malfunctions with, um, not including when I had this thing suppressed, uh, was with the Hurtenberger. Now, I don't know whether the malfunctions were specifically ammo related, but all of the issues that I had were with that. Now, as I alluded to, when I had the silencer on, um, this thing was overgassed to the point where I was getting like numerous stovepipes. And that's just something I knew kind of out of the gate with AR-10s. Suppressing them is always, kind of a complicated thing to do unless you make some modifications to the gun. I've got a lot of experience with uh, helping customers at the store where I work, trying to get their guns running, um, and really with AR-10s in general, just getting things trouble shot and getting them running is tricky. Um, so I do plan on probably swapping out to a spring co, I believe it's the orange spring, the extra strength AR-10 spring, uh, to get this thing a little bit uh, slowed down, especially with the can on it. Um, but, um, Again, that's something I kind of expected. I, I wanted to try it anyway, just so you guys could see, um, but it, it didn't seem to like running suppressed very much. Uh, I did also try running some subsonic ammo from s &B, some 200 grain stuff. Um, that just didn't have enough juice to get this gun to cycle. I'll show you that footage real, here real quick. So now I want to see if this thing runs suppressed with some subsonic ammo. So I've got some subsonic s and uh, I'll put the exact grain weight on the screen. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I know it's over 200 grains. I've got my YHM Resonator K. These are going to be the first suppressed shots period through this. And I just want to mainly see if this thing cycles subs with a can. And then we'll try supers with a can and see how that does. <laughs> no, I could tell right away. I'll tell you, recoil is very soft, and I'm assuming it's very quiet. Right. 
So, stove pipe there. I can definitely tell this gun has more gas now than it did before, obviously. So I had a dead trigger, put a live round in the chamber. Um, I will say I did also try this with some steel cased ammo. Um, so I'll show you that here real quick as well. So now we're gonna try some steel cased ammo. This is 150 grain uh, Red Army Standard. Uh, 308. We'll see how this does. Yep. Ran that just fine. Is that an exhaustive test of steel? No, but a good indicator. But with that being said, um, the malfunctions I had were all stovepipe type my malfunctions. Um, Again, it's hard to say for sure exactly what the culprit there is, whether it's you know magazines, the ammo, overgassing, or, or what, um, but those are the malfunctions that I had. Uh, there may have been one that didn't make it on camera um, because I was, I was trying to use my GoPro more, as you'll see in the footage. Um, however, I'm still not super well-versed in using it again, so I did do a couple drills without it actually recording, um, and I believe one of those malfunctions I had was when that camera was off. So uh, all in all, outside of shooting suppressed, I believe I had three stovepipe malfunctions and again, the 850 rounds that we have through this thing so far. And again, all of that with the Hurtenberger ammo, which I I've know to be good quality ammo, at least I've heard it's good quality ammo. So again, do with that information what you will, uh, but that's the experience so far. Now, one of the first things you'll notice when you start shooting AR-10s is the weight, um, especially when you're talking about an 18-inch heavier barrel like this Criterion barrel. This thing does fatigue you pretty quickly. I believe Naked um, Midwest Industries advertises that it's like eight pounds, nine ounces, something like that, so just over eight and a half pounds. And that's definitely not nothing. Um, and then you put a scope, you put a light, you put everything else on there, and this thing's gonna start weighing you down. Now, that being said, you can still run this thing pretty dang quick, especially for a long, heavy rifle. Uh, I was actually really surprised at the um, speed at which I was able to get shots on target and transition from one target to another. Now, I did definitely fatigue as time went on, uh, but let me go ahead and show you some of the stuff uh, shooting this thing uh, rather quickly. All right, so shooting fast doesn't really mean much if you can't hit what you're shooting at. How do you know if I'm hitting what I'm shooting at? So we'll do some quick build drills. Uh, so six rounds, basically as fast as I can pull the trigger. Uh, all shots, hopefully in the A zone. I got another camera on the target so you guys can actually see what we're doing as we're doing it. We were at about seven yards. I had to pace it off. My buddy has my rangefinder. I did like seven and a half paces to give myself <laughs> as few things working in my favor as possible um but uh let's let's do some drills all right so that was uh 147 uh, all shots in the a zone kind of went up worked my way back down try this again That was a 150. Again, all shots. Looks like it's an eight. This is getting a little close. First shot took me. That was a 161. Um, not bad. Slowing down a little bit. This gun gets heavy. Uh, I'm going to have to do a reload on this one, so we'll just power through it. Uh, 
reload was pretty slow. Um, let's just do one more of these for good measure. So it was going really good until my last shot took a while. You can see mud being shot off the berm, landing all over my, my stuff, including my scope. Uh, 172, again, all of those shots in the A zone. So I can't complain about that. I figure we got the camera set up. Um, we might as well do some more. So I'm gonna head, gonna try to do a Mozambique. So two in the center A zone, one in the A zone of the head. This one will probably take me a little bit longer. Um, at least that last shot probably will. Well, let's get started. Okay, that was a one, two, nine, uh, all in the A zone. One, two, three, so a little bit faster, get on the A zone. Ooh. That's a, I think just splitting that line. That was a one. Five, six, five, again, all A zone. Um, we'll just finish out the mag doing this. All right, still in A zone, one, two, nine. I knew a little, a little cocky on that first shot, but we got a first shot out of the A zone. See if we can't rein it back in. And again, that first shot off to the left. I'm gonna blame fatigue. Yeah, we're slowing down. Uh, 159, back to all A zone. Suck this arm back a little bit. Okay. Just broke the line at the bottom. Back to a 132. Okay, finished off for the fastest time of a 141, but we drop below on the A zone on the head. You know, this this gun gets heavy. I use that as my excuse, um, but still a lot of fun nonetheless. And this gun this gun could definitely be run as fast as the person pulling the trigger. Now speed is all well and good, but how accurate is this thing? So with the M80 ball ammo that I tested, again, Hurtenberger and ADI, I was getting consistently right at two MOA groups at 100 yards. Um, so that to me is perfectly acceptable. Uh, two MOA with M80 ball, just ran standard like old, uh, uh, just mil spec stuff, I'm perfectly happy with. Now with the match grade ammo, I did 175 grain Sierra Match King loaded by Fioki. That consistently grouped right at one MOA. And then I also did some 168 grain CBC uh, that also printed right at one MOA. And a lot of that comes down to me just kind of being a one MOA shooter. That's about as good as I can do generally. On a good day, maybe I can squeeze three quarters of an MOA out of, uh, out of a gun. Uh, but for me, one MOA with match ammo and two MOA with off the shelf old surplus ammo is a-okay with me. And I think a lot of that comes down to the Criterion barrel. Uh, the Criterion barrels that I have experience with tend to shoot everything pretty well and then some things really well and this seems to be no exception. Um, so I like that I have the um, ability to put groups where I want them at distance, but then also still be able to run this thing very quickly on targets close in. Now, obviously I'm gonna be doing a lot more shooting with this. If I can, I wanna to try to get this rifle into some matches just to be able to do it more of a head to head against lighter, quote unquote, faster rifles. Um, but so far I am very happy with how this thing is performing. And I guess that's a good point to talk about what my experience in the past with AR-10s is. So years ago, I decided I want to get into AR-10s and I knew that there were some issues when you are trying to build them, uh, namely that there's no mil spec when it comes to the 308 pattern rifles. 
So generally you wanna to try to get as many things from the same company as possible, or at least your core components, you want them to be all the same pattern if you can, just because again, it's gonna make life easier for you as you go. So the upper receiver, lower receiver, barrel, and bulk carrier group, I got all from the same company. A bunch of the other stuff like the lower parts kit, same thing as well. However, I ran into some pretty severe issues getting that thing working. It was either reliable or it was accurate. I couldn't get it to be both. And frankly, I just got sick and tired of having to go to the range, troubleshoot issues, try different ammo, try different magazines, retorque barrel nuts, change barrels, doing all this stuff. And finally, I just got sick and tired of it. I got fed up and I just washed my hands of the whole thing. And I said, maybe I'll revisit it in a couple years. If I do get another AR-10 though, it's gonna be a factory built rifle, just so someone else gets to deal with that troubleshooting stuff, figuring out how to get it to work. And then I can then take it from there. And so a couple of years go by, I see more and more stuff happen in the AR-10 sphere. Things start to seem to get better figured out. And so I decided to reach out to Midwest Industries because I figured if anyone's gonna get it right, it's gonna be these guys. And um, they sent one out for me to test. And I can tell you, I have been very, very happy. Again, I have had a couple malfunctions, all with the same ammo type, but um, over, well, overall, for as far as AR-10s go, this thing has been running very, very well. Uh, I see people shoot AR-10s all the time with way more malfunctions than this thing is ha uh, having. And then it's also shooting as well as I can shoot as a shooter. Now, I was hoping to do some long range shooting in this video. Um, however, the range where I shoot is currently snowed in, or at least the range where I shoot long range uh, is currently snowed in. In fact, when I woke up this morning, there was two inches of snow on the ground. Thankfully it's all dried up, but it's still really cold. Um, so once things dry up, I do plan on getting out and taking this thing out to, you know, eight, 900 yards, hopefully a thousand yards. Um, so I will be doing an update to this video once I have an opportunity to opportunity to do that. But again, based on my experience so far, I have very high expectations for this rifle once I get it out to some distance. So all of that is well and good. However, a lot of it's gonna come down to price for most people. So what does this thing cost? Now, at the time of making this video, if you were to go onto MidwestIndustriesInc.com, the website, um, and look at these rifles, the one as configured like this, obviously minus all my accessories, is gonna run you about $17.50. Now, that being said, uh, I do have a coupon code um, that I've had for years uh, that you guys can use. Uh, it's Oregon Trail, as you see on the bottom of your screen there. Uh, and with that, you get 10% off, so if you get the same rifle as I have here with that discount code, you're getting it down closer to like 1500 bucks, which makes this a very competitively priced AR-10. Are there cheaper ones? Yeah. Are there more expensive ones? Yeah. Um, but this, I think, hits a good sweet spot of performance for your money. And again, at 1500 bucks, it's, again, very, very reasonably priced uh, for an AR-10. Now, uh, they do have versions without the Criterion barrel, and I should also say they make a 16-inch version with a Criterion barrel as well, um, but they have a non-Criterion barrel version which starts at closer to 1500 bucks. So again, with that Oregon Trail discount code, that's gonna get you even cheaper. So Midwest Industries is giving you a lot of gun for the money, especially when you start looking at AR-10s. Again, Everything you do in the AR-10 sphere is going to be more expensive. That's just kind of the reality of it. Ammo is more expensive. Mags generally are more expensive. Parts and accessories. Um, so that's just kind of the name of the game. However, these come in very, very competitive. And again, I think you're getting excellent performance for the money that you're putting into it. Again, you, you saw the video, you can make that determination for yourself and hopefully that's, that's what the point of a review is. Um, but again, in my opinion, I'm very, very happy.
Now I am gonna be doing a lot more shooting with this. Obviously there's a, a pretty popular YouTuber who recently made a video featuring an AR-10 that had some uh, long-term durability issues. And um, while I'm not remotely close to the round count that he had through it, again, 850 rounds is definitely not nothing, especially when you're talking 308. Um, I'm, this thing's gonna be in my inventory for a long, long, long time. And uh, as I shoot this, I'm going to be doing update videos, and if I do have any long-term durability issues, then you guys will definitely know. It's helpful to check out my Instagram to be able to stay on top of that. That's usually where I post that kind of stuff. Um, but overall, I, I, I don't expect to run into much here. Again, I do plan on doing some things maybe um, to make this thing run better suppressed, like the Spring Co. Spring. Probably not an adjustable gas block, uh, but again, time will tell on that. But uh, again, I, I'm very, very happy given what my past experience has been. Now, uh, like I said, all the ammo put through this was supplied by myself and from Patreon. I am gonna be going through and picking up every piece of brass so I can also load more uh, to be able to put th more through this. Um, so if you want to support the ammo to get this thing up to a higher round count, definitely check out my link to Patreon down in the comment or down in the description, excuse me. Uh, even a dollar a month, does make a difference. Uh, there's a very small community of us over there. I think as time recording this, there's maybe like 12 people that support me on Patreon. Uh, but we have great discussions over there. We have a Discord server set up. Uh, we do um, some live streams. All my content gets posted over there early. So if any of that stuff sounds interesting to you or you just wanna financially support the channel and help me run rounds through guns like this, definitely check out the links down below. Um, but anyway, with all that being said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching. Okay, we're back. I just spent 28 minutes filming a review without the microphone on. So I didn't get any audio from that. So we're gonna try this again.